Send it. So, you know, one of the things that we were trying to figure out is, is with a small company like us, what's going to be the next tool that we need to, to gain capacity and be able to do some things that we need to do and don't want to send out to shops. Oh, why don't you just let me cut that? What's going to be the next thing we do to get this open? <laughs> so the, uh, the Langmuir CNC Crossfire uh, plasma table is really going to help us with the ability to start doing bracketry uh, and other custom fab, especially for Robert's Dots, uh, Dotson, which we're getting ready to do more heavily as far as doing floor plans and uh, brackets, custom brackets, engine. Custom engine the thing about it is nobody on the market has a CNC this cheap that you can buy at home. So, so really, I really hope it lives up to its capability that it's been advertising. It makes it really perfect for small fab shops, um, small businesses like us, uh, hobbyists that have a little extra cash flowing around. Peanuts. Packing peanuts. Packaging's pretty good. Um, I'm not Seems a huge so far. fan of packing peanuts, but uh, that's just my OCD. You know. So I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the amount of labeling, uh, and then also. The decal is not just a, uh, a cheap vinyl decal. It looks like it's actually custom painted on top of the uh, powder coated tubing. So that's a, a nice little addition as well. I did see that some people complain about the finish not being even. So far, I don't see that. I mean, it's it's powder it, coated. It, it is just, you know. Uh, or is it powder coated? It is just tube steel with powder coating, but. I mean, are you really worried about the finish of it or functionality? I don't know. I mean, I'm not worried about the As long as it's steel. not crap. That's actually pretty nice. So, another thing, it looks like they actually do a packing list. I can tell it's been checked off by a person. Uh, so hopefully that means that everything is here and we're not worried about looking for components that are missing. Here's the booklet. It, it appears that um, all the instructions are online, which is videos. I've seen some of them. So that's kind of nice. It's like 11 parts or so, 12 parts. Um, teaches you how to put the entire unit together and run it. So I mean, the good thing is they're all on YouTube, so they're real easy to find. Um, most of them are pretty easy to skip through and hit the high points. So we'll, we'll maybe put some screenshots or other uh, uh, overlays of those videos or link them down in the description below. <laughs> Peanuts. And it's not the good kind, it's the it's the bad kind. <laughs> How's that again? So now we got the bottom frame done. Uh, now all we gotta do is add the gantry and the slots. So now we're done with the gantry system and we're going to move on to putting in the bed and the slats. So we screwed up. Um, we bought a water table with the crossfire 
And it's supposed to get installed before Step we do one. the slats. If slat holders and brackets are installed on the crossfire, remove these items before proceeding with the water table installation. So uh, installing the water table is pretty easy. Uh, even though there's not an instructional YouTube video for this one, you just lay the table on top of the crossbars. There's some self-tapping screws that you put in. Thankfully, they already have the rubber washers on them so that you don't have any leakage out of your water table. Um, and then other than that, the plug is a very simple install right in the middle. So all in all, it's actually a simpler install than the factory cross uh, bars that come with it. So we're installing the ball screws right now. Um, not that easy. Just really need to follow the video on this one. So we just finished up installing the lead screws and now we're moving on to putting on the torch uh, slider as well as finishing up the routing of the cable trays and wires. assembled uh, as far as the mechanical installation. Now we're getting ready to hook up the control box, which is found down on the leg, which got installed yesterday. So thankfully everything's pretty easily uh, labeled and, and found. Uh, you got your uh, X motor. It's a simple D sub connector. And then the same thing with the Y motor. Other than that, the USB connector is right here. Power connector is on the bottom. It's really easy to find. Uh, what we are going to hit on and talk about is this torch on and off. Our hypertherm has a machine torch uh, with it. You can see we installed that yesterday as well, which comes along on this swivel arm. Uh, we have the machine torch attachment. So now we just got to wire it up so that it works properly to fire when it needs to with the CNC program. We'll be running our machine off of hypertherm 45 XP. And we actually bought a machine torch to go with this unit and it is already paired and ready for CNC control. What we found is it come with a machine pendant, a remote start basically, and we won't be using that with this. We'll simply cut this, use this connector with two wires in it, and then pair it up with our connection to go to the crossfire. Okay, so what makes the torch fire is actually pin three and four on the back of this serial port right here. So what we're gonna do is cut this that's already wired to pin three and four here and pair it to the connector for the crossfire. And if you happen to have a buddy that can come help you, that makes things easier too. Simply wait for that to cool just a minute before you slide your heat shrink up. And what the machine is actually looking for is just continuity between pin three and four, so it doesn't matter. And then use a heat gun to heat shrink your connections. Now what that's gonna do is give you a nice secure connection so you don't have to worry about this coming apart as you move it around. So we got everything wired up on the control system. We got the USB to the laptop running Mach 3. Uh, we used all the tutorial videos to get that set up on this PC. Over here on the hypertherm, uh, we noticed that our light for the machine torch is highlighted, meaning that it sees the, the continuity between the unit itself and the machine torch off on the crossfire. So now we're gonna do a test fire to make sure that everything's working properly.
So overall, I got to say for a $2,000 system, it's pretty good. Um, the accuracy is really good. Uh, things worked pretty much the way we wanted them to. Things were easy to put together. The videos were very good. Uh, there's a couple things here and there, like uh, how to integrate a hypertherm system. I think they could improve on showing how to connect other systems, but pretty much we're happy with it. So until next time. Dunzo.